simple case of good folks working side by side to make this world a better place. We'll continue onward as we're stronger than Is Rotary. Rotary is a voluntary, non-profit, non-governmental, non-religious organization of industry professionals and academics working in intertwined autonomous networks providing self-education, exchange of knowledge, and humanitarian aid. It might sound complex, but it's built on a very simple philosophy. You go through life, working, studying, and taking care of your loved ones, but at some point you might stop and feel a spark, an urge to not only do good, but to help others as well as yourself. Throughout life you've had tons of ideas. All of them might not have been the most complex or the most developed, but it's the thought that counts, isn't it? When an idea is introduced into the Rotarian network, and we exchange thoughts, knowledge and experience, ideas grow along with ourselves and are brought into reality. That is what Rotary is. We know that simple thoughts can become the beginning of something huge and life-changing for millions of people around the world. For us, it has led to projects like local mentorship programs, providing clean water, building schools, disease awareness campaigns, scholarships, exchange programs, wigs for cancer patients, teaching kids karate, providing medical care, blood donations, fighting illiteracy, protecting mothers and children, and emergency food supplies. And to think that our first project was a public toilet, and now we're on the brink of eradicating polio. We believe that with the right people, the smallest thing can make a huge difference. So when you feel the spark, remember Rotary. Rotarians, friends, family, dignitaries, and all others ready for a world without a pandemic it is my sincere pleasure to welcome all of you to Rotary International District 7545's inaugural district conference. It's been two years since any of us in this district have been able to attend our own district conference, and there is no doubt that we all wanted to be having this event in person as we are used to doing. But with safety as our primary concern, it's just not time to do that. Nevertheless, I know that while in the comfort of your own surroundings, each of you is about to enjoy the next few days like never before. Thanks in large part to our technology partner, Interaction Media of Morgantown, you are about to meet internationally renowned individuals sharing topics some of us have never heard about, entertainers providing us with talents seldom seen, a first ever virtual bourbon tasting by a past district governor, physically see money being raised to help pack meals to feed the hungry all over the world, awards, accolades, and recognition being presented to many of our own neighbors and friends, and learn who is the $5,000 raffle winner, the proceeds from which will greatly help families of pediatric cancer patients throughout our beautiful mountain state. Folks, you are certainly in for what is hoped to be a real treat for everyone, but as I am just the bringer of joy and nowhere near the star of this show, without further ado, let's get started and make it official that the 2021 Virtual District 7545 Conference is now underway. And now, as is customary in many of our own Rotary communities, I will at this time ask Rabbi Joshua Leaf, President-elect of the Rotary Club of Wheeling, to offer our first invocation of this event. Rabbi Leaf. Hi, I'm Rabbi Joshua Leaf, and I'm here in the sanctuary at Temple Shalom in Wheeling, West Virginia. To my fellow Rotarians, I welcome you to our virtual convention. I'm very honored that uh, our district governor, Sawyer, has asked me to offer this invocation today. So let us pray. Lord our God, we thank you for our many blessings, for faith and fellowship, for health and hope, for comfort and community. Help us, O oh God, to be a blessing unto others as a way of giving thanks for all of the many ways in which we are blessed. 
Let us rededicate ourselves to service above self so that we might live up to all of the potential we find in ourselves by serving our communities to the best of our ability. Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who has blessed us each in many, many ways and inspires us to be a blessing unto others. Thank you so much to my fellow Rotarians, and I wish us all a wonderful virtual convention ahead. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.
Now that you've met all 54 of our district's clubs in virtual flag fashion, I want to take just a few minutes to tell you that recognition for countless individuals will occur throughout the conference, both today and tomorrow, who without their time, experience, and dedication, this conference and everything in it you will enjoy would not have been possible. In addition to all of the technology being provided at its cost by Interaction Media, specifically Morgantown Rotarians Jim Matuga and Dylan Sheldon and their entire team, we are blessed to have supporting our event a wide variety of corporate club and club member sponsors that also need identified and thanked. Much gratitude goes to our break sponsors, HealthWorks Rehab and Fitness, the Parkersburg Brewing Company, and my home club, the Rotary Club of Fairmont, as well as our general sponsors of District Governor nominee Dan and his wife Carol McCarthy, the Mills Group Architectural Firm, the Mountain State E-Club, the Rotary Club of South Fairmont, and the Rotary Club of White Sulphur Springs, all for their financial contributions. I want to thank the District Conference Planning Committee comprised of my wife, Julie, of the Rotary Club of Kingwood as chair, Greg Cartwright of the Rotary Club of Grafton, District Governor nominee-designate Jordan Feathers of the Rotary Club of Cheat Lake, District Governor nominee Dan McCarthy of the Rotary Club of Beckley, past District Governor Ron Napier of the Rotary Club of Front Royal, Virginia, our District Public Image Chair Amanda Ream of the Rotary Club of South Charleston, and last but certainly not least, Sharon Welsh of the Rotary Club of Moundsville, all for bringing the many various moving parts of this event together. And were it not for the district leadership team, committee chairs, assistant governors, and club presidents tackling all of their own responsibilities, I would not have had the ability to help plan this event with the rest of the group. So to all of those people and many others of whom you will hear about throughout the weekend, a sincere thank you from me. Now, let's move toward our next highlight of the conference, tonight's keynote speaker. Those people and many others whom you will hear about throughout the weekend, it's your thank you for me. Now, let's move toward our next highlight of the conference, tonight's keynote. Those people and many others whom you will hear about throughout the weekend, it's your thank you for me. Now, let's move toward our next highlight of the conference, tonight's keynote. Those people and many others whom you will hear about throughout the weekend, it's your thank you for me. This next gentleman, born in Aberdeen, Scotland, our keynote speaker for the evening, was educated at the Aberdeen Grammar School and Aberdeen College of Commerce. First employed as a fledgling journalist, he went on to serve Her Majesty's government in the Smuggling and Drug Enforcement Department. Now, what I don't quite understand is if that means he's operated on both sides of the fence or not. Nevertheless, after moving to England, he started his own company, George Hotels LTD and specialized in ownership and operation of hotels, restaurants, and English pubs. Keep that in mind that for a few minutes later. He, he then sold all of his business interests in the UK and moved to the United States in 2004 with his wife, Carol, and daughter, Pippa. Upon lighting in Florida, he started GRB Properties LLC, retired in 2008 after achieving green card residency, and ultimately all three of them became US citizens in 2015. A past president of the Rotary Club of Bartow, Florida, and past district governor of District 6890 in Western Central Florida, this gentleman since has served as an assistant Rotary coordinator from 2014 to 18, and is currently the Rotary coordinator for Zone 34, which is all of Georgia, Florida, and the Caribbean. Rough, right? He and his <laughs> wife are major donors to the Rotary Foundation, and he is a member of the Paul Harris Society. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you all to welcome from the Rotary Club of Bartow, Florida, PDG and Zone 34 Rotary Coordinator, my two-finger friend, George Robertson Burnett. But before I pass the mic, I want to first share with all of you a little something I had specially prepared just for my friend, George.
Well, he knows he's ready to go. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, that, that brought a tear to my eye. And uh, initially, I didn't realize what the song was, but now realizing that it's uh, West Virginia. Hey, it's great to be with you. Thank you so much, Sean, for inviting me along. And I, I will just uh, actually uh, share my screen. If you'll just bear with me, this will be a bit clunky. Ah, it says no sharing. So I wonder if the technical side could actually allow me to share my screen. Is somebody working on that? Oh, thank you so much. I knew there would be some technical wizard in the background working on that. Oh, yes, I can. Thank you. It's so much better to look at something other than me, I can assure you. Uh, how does that look? I hope you can see my screen now. Well, thank you so much for this invite. And uh, um, here in sunny Florida, it's a little bit warm, but I'm glad I wore my jacket because I see your district governor had his jacket on. So, uh, so let me just... Uh, Wind on. So here I am at District 7545's conference. Absolutely fabulous. Let me introduce myself, although you've already. I'm George Robertson Burnett. As you can see from, here from the accent, I'm not from round here. And that picture is rather boring because that's not how I see myself. I have to let you know that this is how I see myself. Yeah, you got it. That old Braveheart guy, you know, although maybe I don't look as good as, uh, as Mel Gibson. Maybe it's more like that. That's the way that I look. So us Scots are known for the fact that we uh, may imbibe in a little bit of our national uh, beverage too much. So I wanted to share with you a little bit of an accomplishment that I have. Uh, as of today, I have got 71 days without an alcoholic beverage. I mean, for a Scotsman, that's really something. 71 days and counting. Uh, now, just for clarity, those 71 days are not consecutive. Uh, they are my adult lifetime total and I have no intentions of adding to it anytime soon. As you can see, I like to have fun in Rotary. Do you like to have fun in Rotary? I certainly do. And uh, blimey, this has been a blast ever since I joined. So let me take you on a little trip back to where I come from. This is what they call the United Kingdom. Although from what you hear sometimes, it may not appear overly united at times. The United Kingdom is Scotland, England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. If you add the other Ireland, then that becomes the British Isles. And if you only talk about Scotland, England, and Wales, that is called Great Britain. Hey, geography lessons. So how about a little bit of a history lesson as well? So here's, I, I want you to concentrate on that border, that border between Scotland and England. That was actually formed in 50 BC, would you believe, when the Romans invaded our island and they worked their way up through England defeating as they went until they came on these blue-faced people uh, in the outer extremities and they thought hey they thought better of it to be perfectly frank and so uh, they stopped there and that's where the border was uh, unfortunately being romans of course they kept coming over that border and stealing our women and our sheep and so we had to do something about it so donald of the mcdonald clan said you know what we're going to do we're going to build a wall and we're going to get the romans to pay for it and guess what? That's exactly what happened. We've got Hadrian's Wall there to this day that separates the nations. So, hey, there's nothing new, nothing new at all. So let me tell you, uh, for those that have been to Scotland, you probably all know, already know this. Our climate is not the best in the world, let me tell you. Uh, we only have two seasons in Scotland. One's called July and the other one's called winter. And uh, unfortunately, uh, it, it does get rather cold. However, due to that, it's a beautiful country and it's very, very green, of course, just like Ireland. Now we do get a lot of rain, but that's just as well because we have a saying in Scotland that today's rain is tomorrow's whiskey because of course that's what we turn our rain into. So that's a, let me continue on the climate theme though, because in 2004, I decided to emigrate to the United States with my family, as Sean said, 
Uh, on the left there is my daughter, uh, Philippa, which is shortened in the United Kingdom to Pippa. And on the right is my wife, Carol. Now, I know what you're all thinking, but I married her for her money. So there we arrived here in 2004, which was also one of the worst hurricane seasons uh, that, that's been remembered in Florida. I mean, I remember thinking to myself, you know, what the heck did I come here for? You know, I mean, we haven't got good weather in Scotland, but we've got absolutely nothing that will kill you. But however, we, we got through that hurricane season and within two weeks of arrival, uh, I met the other lady in my life. Now I'm confiding in you here. So this is the other lady in my life. Uh, she actually is the very lady who called me one day and said, would you like to go to lunch? Very forward, I thought. However, as you all know, being Rotarians, will you come to lunch is just another way of saying, would you like to join Rotary? And this is my sponsor. You know, you, you, for, you forget who was the district governor at the time, you forget who was the president. You never forget the person that brings you into Rotary. And I've never forgotten my dear friend, Anita, who got me into Rotary and started me on this most magical journey that I've been on ever since. It's been absolutely fabulous. Thank you, Anita for allowing me to be part of Rotary. Now, when we first came to the United States, I have to say there were some cultural challenges that we weren't accustomed to. You know, you know Walgreens was founded uh, on the principle of Rotary. I don't know if you know that, but all Walgreens uh, used to have the four-way test showing in their stores, and some of them still do. Uh, what I can't understand is, though, uh, which seems a bit backwards to me, you know, if you want cigarettes, you just go through that door and it's right there. On the way. But if you're really feeling sick, you have to walk all the way to the back of the store. I've never thought that was really fair. Surely it should be the other way around. So in the other challenges, you'll recognize this. This is ice. And for those that have been to the United Kingdom, you know that that's a very, very rare commodity. If you ask for ice in, in a hostelry, they'll say to you, do you want one lump or two? On the grounds that we've actually lost the recipe and we don't know how to make this stuff. But let me tell you, when I came here and I went to Chick-fil-A, and I went in there and they filled up this big bucket with ice and put a smidgen of Coke in there. That does not go down with us well with the Scotsman, you know. I mean, we've got deep pockets and short arms. You know, we like to get value for money. So I'm not so keen on the ice, I have to say that. Here's another thing that I find very challenging. Have you ever gone up to the drive through in the bank? And when you look down, there is instructions in Braille. I don't understand why they put instructions on Braille there because how did they think you got there? You drove there. So really, really weird. And my last of my cultural challenges is petrol, or as you call it, gas. Now, I mean, I don't know why you call it gas. I've seen it, it's a liquid. So I don't know why you call it gas. I prefer petrol and there we go. So there's a few of the cultural challenges I've felt when I'm here. I also had a misconception about Rotary, I have to say, coming from Scotland, as you can imagine, Rotary clubs generally meet in the evening at the poshest hotel in town and you'll walk in and generally you'll kind of stagger out because there will be adult beverages involved. So when dear old Anita asked me to go for lunch to the Rotary club, I went, lunch? Rotary club? Surely they meet in the evening. She said, no, they meet at And I thought, well, I don't want to be drinking at lunchtime because I'll have to write the day off. Having said that, when I arrive at the Rotary club of Barto, I look around and there's no bar. But there is a brown liquid, uh, which I'd never seen before. And I took one taste of it. And I can assure you, I've never drunk it again. Iced tea is not a thing in the United Kingdom, I can assure you. I'm virtually positive that iced tea was invented when you threw the tea into Boston Harbor. It was a great protest. But in my book, it sucks as a drink. This is the national, well, my national drink. And I want to show you this because I want you to see what two fingers of whiskey looks like. It's not those two fingers, it's those two fingers. That's a proper measure of scotch. So there we have it. So anyway, would you believe, despite the fact that most of the people in the Bartow Rotary Club couldn't understand much of what I said, they decided to make me the president in 2008. What an absolute honor. And of course, I got to go to Pets. Never been to Pets before, obviously. And when we got to Pets, they take your picture um, when you go to Pets in Florida. It's all Florida Pets, eight districts all together. They take your picture, and this was my picture. Yeah, I was the deer in the headlights. I couldn't, I mean, I knew so little. I knew what my club did. But, you know, when I went to Pets, it opened up this fabulous vista of what Rotary does worldwide. I was absolutely amazed, and I've been amazed ever since, and so proud to be part of this fabulous organization. 
you know, and I heard for the first time about Polio Plus because our club hadn't done that. And I decided I wanted to do something about that. So I go back to the club and looked at the budget, but they didn't have anything in the budget to do Polio Plus. So I said, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll collect our loose change in a bucket and in three months time, we'll bring it in, tot it up and we'll send it off to Polio. And that's exactly what we did. Three months later, Anita, who works for the bank, totted up the money and she said, yeah, we, we raised it was something like $3,800, which wasn't bad. It was only small change. And she said, our president, as in me, uh, had the most coins. So I thought, well, of course, because I was enthusiastic about it. But then she added, but he also had the least money. And I think, wait a minute, wait a minute. I had the most coins with the least money. How does that work? And she said, well, there weren't any quarters. In it. Now, I know the reputation of Scottish people. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, what's the difference between a Scotsman and a coconut? Well, there's a good chance you get a drink out of a coconut, virtually no chance you get one out of a Scotsman. But I can assure you, I had not been taking the quarters out of this. So I was a little bit surprised. So let me reintroduce my daughter. This is her now. This is Pippa. Uh, she was eight years old at the time. And guess what? She'd been taking those coins out of the dish as fast as I was putting them in there. So when I get home, I said, you know, Pippa, you caused me a great deal of embarrassment at the Rotary Club today. And she said, oh, why was that, Dad? And I said, because um, there weren't any quarters. And she says, oh, they're in my bedroom. I like those ones. And I said, yeah, I know you do. Uh, anyway, I explained to her at that time that two of those coins could save a child from a terrible, terrible disease. It's gone up a little bit now, but in those days it was 50 cents. At the end of the week, when I gave her her $10 pocket money, she gave me it right back. And she said, Dad, could you save 20 children with my pocket money? And you know what? That $20 has meant so much to me. It sits there on my giving to the Rotary Foundation. And I look at it and I think, wow, it's not how much you give. It's the heart you give it with. And every Christmas, she puts two quarters onto my present, just to remind us of that lovely story. So moving on, 2013, despite the fact that most of the people in the district couldn't understand what I said, they decided to make me district governor. And I was absolutely delighted to become the district governor for the year with probably the best motto, which was engage Rotary, change lives. Because of course, when we engage Rotary, we change so many lives, but the first life we change is our own. And so I was just so delighted to be part of the 2013-14 uh, year and uh, engaging Rotary and changing lives. So uh, in 2014, I was appointed as an assistant Rotary coordinator, and in 2018, became the Rotary coordinator for Zone 34, which Sean was letting you know is Georgia, Florida, the Caribbean, plus three countries in South America. It's a huge area to cover, and yes, I do get to go there, and because I've got all that huge responsibility, I get six times the salary of a district governor. Isn't that fabulous? Mind you, six times nothing is still nothing. However, I love working in this area, 28 countries, 11 languages, if you count Scottish, there are 10 languages in here, they, apart from my own. It's an absolute pleasure uh, to be the Rotary Coordinator for this fabulous, fabulous zone. So it's time to adapt, isn't it? Boy, have we had to adapt. And of course, this conference which uh, you're, you're having now has had to adapt also. I don't know if you know, but there's a manual which is put together things that you must cover to actually be classified as a conference. And I've gone through that and I thought, well, you know, if, if we could mark off a few of those, then you can just go on and enjoy yourself after that. So that's what I thought we'd do. We'll have our conference very, very quickly. The first thing that conference manual tells you you have to cut is the theme. So here it is. So, hey, that was easy. We've done that. So about new member engagement. So. To all of the new members out there, hello. Okay, so we've done new member engagement. Now the district governor address, that can take 20, 25 minutes, but we can cut that down. Yep, there's the district governor's address. Great, we're getting through this at a great rate of knots. We got to mention the Rotary Foundation, our charity of choice. Please give to the Rotary Foundation, done. Okay, what about uh, Polio Plus? We've got to mention Polio Plus, our greatest external focus. And isn't it fabulous what we've managed to achieve since the mid 80s and nearly now eradicating this disease completely from the earth. And we're, we'll get there. 
because we're rotary. That's Polio Plus covered. And how about membership, our greatest internal focus? All I can tell you to do, bring somebody into Rotary very, very soon. Thank you very much. Would you believe we have now gone through the conference manual so we can go on to enjoying ourselves again? I have to say that when I saw Sean's uh, theme for his year, the Rotary opens opportunities, I was pretty disappointed, I have to tell you, because I put forward an alternative, which I thought was brilliant. I thought it would, would, would really get us all excited. And it, it was rejected. And I, I'm, I'm hoping for next year. Uh, but I will let you know what it was. Here it is. Yep, you don't have to be sober to do good in the world. And it's absolutely true. And I think it's a great Scottish motto, you know. Uh, so we'll, we'll see if it's actually picked up. Uh, well, not next year. We already know that. So when I wanted to go, I wanted to actually um, take you on a little journey about running a district. Here's one great Rotarian, and I wanted to introduce you to another great Rotarian. No, it's not me. This is the guy, Winston Churchill, who uh, obviously was Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. But let me tell you, he was also a staunch Rotarian. He loved Rotary with a vengeance. And, uh, and not a lot of people know that. So there you go. So here's his, the Winston Churchill Guide to Running a District. How about Tact is a way of telling someone to go to hell in such a way that they're looking forward to the journey. He actually said these things, by the way, which reminds us to always be diplomatic. How about success consists of going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. Set your goals, but be flexible. Americans will always do the right thing. You know what's coming but only after having tried all the alternatives. Now, let me just point out that he was half American. I don't know if you knew that, but uh, his mother was actually from America, not from the United Kingdom. So that tells us to don't be afraid to try new things. Continuing with Winston Churchill's guide, an unpopular colleague said to him, Winston, can I borrow tuppence to phone a friend? He immediately retorted, here's fourpence, why don't you phone both of them? Which I think is just hilarious. Um, so budget and use resources wisely. And here's my absolute favorite. Nancy Astle said to him, Winston, if you were my husband, I'd poison your tea. To which he immediately retorted, Nancy, if you were my wife, I'd drink it. Which always tells us never to lose our sense of humor. It is so important in Rotary. I hope you agree with me. I have laughed so much ever since joining Rotary. And uh, it's, it's just been an absolute pleasure to me. Uh, throughout. So here's the one that he actually wrote with Rotary in mind, uh, just to show you that uh, he just did love Rotary. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. And isn't that true of our Rotary? I mean, this has been a fa fabulous journey for me from 2004 to be new to Rotary uh, and, and to be on this journey uh, through the various positions that I've held. But, you know, it's not the positions, it's the people. It's the people I've met along the way, the wonderful friendships that I've, uh, I've actually had, uh, and seeing the fabulous things that Rotary Clubs do throughout the world. It absolutely amazes me. It, let me tell you, our club was losing its passion a little bit, and we had the idea and put together an adoption picnic where we actually find forever homes uh, for children in our community. Uh, so we put together these children that are looking for forever homes with people who are looking to adopt. And every year we find forever homes from anywhere from seven to 12 children. It may not sound massive, but, you know, it's not bad. And Rotary allows us to be part of that fabulous thing, that, you know, where you can help your community, help communities you may never see, help worldwide. This is just the most wonderful organization to be part of. So I wanted to conclude on a story about a uh, coming back from uh, the British Virgin Islands. Uh, I was out in the British Virgin Islands. They have several Rotary clubs out there, and I'd uh, uh, done, uh, you know, speaking at all of them. And on my way back, I uh, had to come through Puerto Rico. So as I get to Puerto Rico, I noticed that there was a, a flight slightly earlier than the one that I was booked on. So I went up to the desk, and this young lady behind the desk asked what I wanted, and I said. Uh, no, I wondered if there's any chance of getting on the earlier flight. Well, guess what? She noticed my rotary pin and she said, are you a Rotarian? And I said, yes, I am. And she said, well, not only am I going to get you on that earlier flight, 
but I'm also going to upgrade you. And I went, wow. I mean, the big seat, the free drinks. I mean, <laughs> what's not to like here? Uh, and that's what she did. She upgraded. Hey, so, hey, who's wearing their pin the next time they go to the airport? We all are. Uh, anyway, that's not the reason for telling you the story, though. Not the fact that I got upgraded is not the reason. The reason I wanted to tell you this story is the four words that that young lady said as I departed from uh, the check-in. As I'm walking away, she said, you Rotarians are awesome. Wow. Four words. You Rotarians are awesome. And I've never forgotten that. In, in, it's only within the last few years, but and I never will forget that. This young lady who lives in Puerto Rico, where, of course, we've done a, had a lot to do because of the hurricane damage and all that sort of thing. But she held uh, Rotary in such high regard uh, that she came out with those fabulous words. And let me tell you, you are awesome. Uh, and it's been awesome sharing stories with you tonight. I hope that... Uh, uh, you've enjoyed that 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 presentation, uh, and I will uh, hand the screen back with sincere thanks uh, for the invitation to be with you tonight, and with the hope that your conference is an absolute blast. Uh, knowing Sean and uh, imagining his team, I, I'm sure it's going to be an absolutely awesome uh, few days uh, for awesome people in Rotary. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. And I'll stop screen sharing now and, uh, so that I can hand this back to the people who really know what they're doing. Did anybody understand a word he just said? If you don't know George, let me encourage you to make an effort to get to know him. All joking aside, and let me tell you when I say there's always a lot of joking when George and I get together. My Rotary world would not be the same if George weren't part of it. So I personally thank him tremendously for being part of our event. Speaking of my world, as you may have been reminded by George's musical introduction, I have been a trumpet player and professional musician now for over 40 years and continue to enjoy playing around the world in different groups in which I'm involved. And as you can imagine, I have met and shared stages with thousands of talented people during such time. So as a Rotary District Governor, especially during a pandemic, I'm in a position to be blessed with an opportunity to provide just a small fraction of those individuals with a virtual stage to enable them to share their talents with you. Jeremy Olisar, professor of music at Waynesburg University, who shared his bagpipe skills, uh, being just one of those. So as my unique way of bidding you all a good night for the end of day one, before we start day two of the conference with our international president, Holger Kanak, tomorrow morning at nine o'clock, indulge me to conclude our evening with an offering of yet another friend of mine, international recording star and the director of jazz at West Virginia University School of Music in Morgantown, West Virginia, Jared Sims, including some friends of his he picked up along the way to our conference. So I hope to see you all again in the morning, and Jared, the stage is yours.